Hello, Mason. It's great to actually meet you. I've been enduring your work this year, so it's it's absolutely fantastic to get a chance to talk to you. Thank you so much. It's very nice to meet you, too. Yeah. Um, well, the first question that I just wanted to ask you was, um, I recently watched the the fourth episode, and there was like a small moment in the episode that I, I absolutely adored, which was you learned that... Um, Raymond's character had uh, had like jumped into the body of a woman and you had, a, I, I forget the exact wording, it was about like, oh, he's being gender creative or he's exploring his gender creativity. And I love that it was just such an offhanded joke that that like was informed by your character and your character's identity, but not like hyper-focused on. It was just sort of like an offhanded like thing. And I, I was curious how you felt about like scenes like that in creating the character. Well, it's interesting. It was kind of, I feel like the natural evolution of everybody having that dialogue with themselves in the writer's room and, and being like, it started off as one thing where, you know, that Ben is leaping into a woman, we have a trans lead, you know, we have this like non-binary individual that's in the room. How do you grapple with that? Like, what is the conversation that takes place there? And so before I believe there was more lines, like there was an actual scene and then all of it got taken out like bef the day before or something. And I just got there on the day and like the, the, the there was just, it didn't feel right not to have something said that wasn't informed by my experience as an individual, but also by like Ian's experience. <laughs> yeah, and so yeah. I, was, like, I, I just ran over to the writers and, and our showrunner and I was just kind of like, can I, can I just like, maybe say this and they were like yeah that's great go do it and so we did it and it was fantastic and they just yeah they want you know we all want these characters to live and breathe in a space where their experiences and their identities obviously are going to inform things but that it's not there doesn't necessarily have to be a monologue or like these big like moments every single time because that's not really indicative of what happens in the real world mm -hmm. it's not indicative of the of the quips and the experiences that i have as you know as a trans individual like yeah. i'm not i'm not often going on a diatribe unless it's in uh, in a panel or an interview or something where you know you have time but yeah in in those moments you're just kind of like oh okay there's <laughs> here's what we, i think it, a soundbite <laughs> we all have our like one word quips for for, yeah. for for every situation i feel like you like develop that um yeah no and that was like another thing that i thought was uh cool about the episode generally i mean this wasn't just specific to you or your character but just the fact that you know in in the older quantum loop show which i adore there was always like this moment of like sam leaping into a, a woman's body and being like oh boy he's he's in a girl's body that's such a big deal yeah. and here like there were moments that were drawn attention to but it wasn't it wasn't like something that are any of the characters really like wrestled with or had like a big thing about or or sexualized in any way, which I thought was excellent. Yeah, and I was yeah we, still, again. we still get our jokes like, you know, we still get those the pantyhose references and like the silly, the silly just like, uh, but yeah, <laughs> Ben's lady for a minute kind of a thing. But overall, yeah, it 100 percent was just like. And, and it's such a testament to Raymond as well as an actor, like it was not commented on. Um, and, and I think that the way that they, yeah, just shaped the whole story, it really was, it was as if he was in anybody else, which I think is important moving forward. Like, it's a great precedent to set with the show because hopefully Ray will be allowed to leap into a litany of bodies in the similar way that, you know, Sam, Beckett um, was able to leap into all kinds of people. Um, it's it's obviously everybody is sitting in the writer's room thinking like, well, what can you, or can you not do? And I like that they're still being creative and just trying to understand, well, how do you make this work in a modern context that doesn't hurt people and actually, you know, does not perpetuate uncomfortable stereotypes or really weird misconceptions of gender or of identity or of race and, you uh, you know, having a, a a really intelligent actor who is empathetic and and wonderful is re a big key part, I think, to being able to successfully navigate that. So um, it's a it's a really cool group effort. I'm I'm excited to see how that moves forward. Yeah, me as well. Um, well, so apologies to have started with the hey non-binary transgender questions because uh, I know that that's always the hyper-focus on uh, when we're talking about like non-binary representation, but I also wanted to 
draw attention to those facts. But I also wanted to ask you, um, like, how, how has it been like to create a character in this like series that's meant so much to to so many? Like for me personally, Quantum Leap was like one of my favorite shows growing up. I had good old Scotty Bats and my <laughs> my Star Trek and my Quantum Leap. So I'm just excited to see it continue. Um, I I feel very fortunate to have gotten this role at the time that I did because I feel like I've I've hit this really strange string of being a part of a lot of stuff that people have adored you know in a specific format uh but whether it was Cowboy Bebop or Sandman or this all of them had a, a pre-existence that you know predated our 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 version of the of the show and so I've kind of had this experience now three times of understanding and and what I should and should not be in tune with when it comes to the you know reactions and the backlash and the, all the all the negativity that can come with trying to um uh, revive or continue a story that was always very inclusive. I mean, all three, if you think about all the source materials for all three of those shows, they were deeply inclusive um, experiences, whether it was in, in, you know, comic book format or, or anime format, um, or with this, you know, a, a television show, all of them pushed boundaries and every single one of them um, really, really did a lot for, uh, for representation in that time. And so it's weird to think that like, there would be pushback when you're like kind of revisiting those, um, properties, but there still is because there, you know, there will always be, um, a group of, uh, a group of people in the world who, who just you know, <laughs> really aren't necessarily with it yet. Um, and, and that's okay. Like, I hope that, that that isn't always true. And I hope that eventually, you know, we'll be able to create more shows like this and it will never be a point of contention that people aren't like, oh, I'm mad because there's people of different ethnicities in this show or because there's people of different gender experiences in this show. Um, but because this is, yeah, now number three of me seeing it happen to myself and to my fellow cast members, you know, with Sandman was populated by so many queer people and so many people of color that like to watch people experience that in a negative way before the show came out was insane. Because then once people watched the show, they were like, oh, okay, I get it. Like this all makes sense. And this was what was in the books and everybody cap. Like it's so, it's so silly. Well, I, I always, I always look at people that like complaining about, oh, look, it's gone woke or whatever. Number one, I always take that as evidence like, oh, then that means that the show is doing its job in pushing people to go outside of their comfort zone and like examine these things. If, if there was no, uh, like boundary pushing, then I think that that's that that speaks to like the art not actually saying something. Um, and it sucks that it's always come down on like just the mere inclusion of somebody of a, a different identity than what we would normally think. But uh, then then sort of pervasive culture would normally think that should be allowed in these stories. But it's like also our identities as non-binary people or trans people, I think inherently lend themselves to these stories. Like for me, uh, sorry oh, yeah. to rant at you, like Quantum Leap, was a show that I like as a young baby trans, like figuring myself out. I'm like, oh, look, a guy in the body of a woman. That's not yeah. awakening any feelings at all in me. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, yeah. and so to get to this show and to have your character be uh, included in that story and get to make jokes about it, but also like normalize it too, uh, yeah. I think is, uh, I think it, it speaks to the show recognizing and pushing forward with the messages that it always had baked into it. Yeah, and I think that that's what all good art, you know, does and what all great entertainment does because it's, it offers you a world view and an experience that may or may not be your exact one, but still can connect with you in a deep way, you know, and I, I didn't grow up like, I don't know, it's, I, I find the argument very strange because when I think about it in the reverse, I'm like the amount of straight white cis <laughs> men on television was a it's it's astounding. I mean, they're still the number one, <laughs> you know, the people who make the most money, the people who are in the most things, they're not going anywhere. But that didn't turn me into like a a white straight cis man. Like it had no effect on my ability to empathize with them. It had no effect on my ability to fall in love with you know Steve Carell as an actor and his work and like still find him to be like one of the most, you know, most entertaining people in the world. Like 
I don't understand the concept of like, oh, because this character is a person of color or because that actor is trans or queer in any way, I can't watch this. I can't connect with this. I can't, because I'm like, what are you talking about? It had no, like, I I in no way was negatively affected by, by other people's identity and experience uh, unless it was done purposefully in a harmful way. And so like, it just, it does, the, us being in the room should not necessarily have any impact on someone's ability to see themselves in storytelling because it, 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 it like the, it, I don't know. It's just, there's a no, lot more stories to, to be had. <laughs> that's what art's about. Like it's about empathizing with people. It's about like yeah. creating moments of, of empathy and that like, and that's what quantum leap specifically is about too. Like getting to be uh, living in someone else's experience for a while. Like that's, that's, it's literally just taking the whole idea of art and making it textual. Um, and I, and I think that that's this, this version of the show is doing it excellently. Um, one other aspect that I wanted to talk to you about, uh, just to wrap out, because I have only a few more minutes, um, was your character being the the tech person on the show, which uh, on one hand, like, uh, again, as a trans person, like that speaks to me as like, I'm always, there's like such a, a conversion of like tech people and transness and non-binariness and identity going all the way back to things like the matrix or even yes. before then too. <laughs> Um, and so I'm, I'm curious, like what, what that element of your character brings, uh, brings to the show. Yeah. I mean, I would, I was said something similar, um, to someone about the show as you just did, where like, to me, it is a very natural place for, you know, the non-binary or trans character to exist because those are the datas. Like those are the people in, in, in the Star Trek and the Star Wars and stuff that you kind of like, you always saw them and you're like, oh yeah, that I read, <laughs> I read something here. Back. Right. I read, I'm reading something very interesting and specific here. Um, but you know, for me, like I I was one of those trans people that thought that that's where my life was headed in reality. Like I loved science i loved technology i loved all of those you know all of the things that i kind of get to play with and talk about on the show i thought that i was gonna go into a field like that you know for eons for years i never thought i was going to be an actor um so it's really fun because like this is something i pictured myself doing in a very specific capacity um but just not on television. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. do it on TV is really fun and 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 presents its own you know challenges and its own specificity. But um, but no, I, I I love being able to stretch my kind of like nerd geek side, um, especially so consistently between this and and Sandman and and Cowboy Bebop. Like I I'm hitting this really childlike sweet spot for me where I'm like this is the stuff that I grew up always wanting to be a part of but never thought I'd have the opportunity to do um it just didn't enter my like mind as as uh, a thing that I'd get to do as an actor I always thought okay I'll play this you know kind of like this drag character here and I'll do theater or I'll do whatever but to get to be in massive franchises and 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 big sci-fi and fantasy worlds is like it's everything that I I wanted to do when I was wearing capes in my <laughs> yeah. um well you you froze on my screen I don't know if you can hear me anymore but uh, I'll just say you're kicking butt uh and I appreciate you doing all the work that you're doing and uh continue continue kicking butt uh everywhere like i'm i'm excited to see what you continue to do both on this show and hopefully more sandman as well um and beyond so thank you thank, thank you so much, so much for your time yeah. it's really nice meeting you it was nice meeting you <laughs>